again the Lord exposes. Wow! When it's time to intercede, as a watchman, follow through your own prayer. And when, it, when God is going to raise you up to intercede to an original or a national level, you get your information on the radio, on the news. You are listening not to be encouraged. Get that in your spirit. All of those news are bad news. You are not listening to get to be encouraged. If you want to be encouraged, you go to church. You go to events like this. If you are listening to the radio and to the news, you are getting information for you to use in your intercession. That's the purpose of it. In order for you to follow through where you have started. Remember, as, as a watchman, there will be a wall in front of you that will resist you. But one thing I have known, I have read in the Bible that even the Jericho walls collapsed. Yes. Even the Red Sea was divided by the Lord. Yes. So meaning, all of these things, they can collapse, they can be broken, and they are under a fervent intercession. The entire New York region, the entire New York region, whatever whatever denomination was established in the states where I'm living and where I'm working, that city was birthed under the intercession of Father Nash and my favorite revivalist mentor, Charles Finney. Yes. During the 1800s. When I was in the Philippines 21 years ago, I did, as a baby Christian, I did not start with your with your simple discipleship. I started right away with revival books. Do I understand what I read? I don't. <laughs> and so many times when I read, I have to cry. There was even a time that I'm writing the book, literally. I was writing the book in my desperation to understand God's ways and revival. I love revivalists. I love George Spurgeon. When other people at my age are still learning how to grow because they were newly born Christians, I was so ambitious that the book that I'm reading are Charles Spurgeon's, Charles Finney, all the revivalists. My entire mindset was groomed in the principle of revival. I am telling you I do not know how to pastor, to minister, and to teach un 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 unless it's under the anointing of revival. That's the only thing I know. I grow in the teaching. I educate myself in that. I'm walking, I'm walking in the streets of New York. I'm ministering to people and I said, God, I am proud to, to, to know that the dream of my heart to see where Charles Feeney had sown the revival is the same place where I'm working. God put me exactly to the place of the man of God and I look up as my only mentor that had raised me up when I was a baby Christian. You know, you are what you eat. Yes. If you eat the word of God, the word of God will come out from you. Yes. Yes. If you read revival, revival books, revival concepts and revival principles is what will come out from you. And when you minister, revival anointing is flowing from you. You are what you eat. If you keep on watching porn, what will come out of you is porn. <laughs> Even your dream is porn. I won't be surprised if you will be fornicating, pregnant, oh my Lord. What you eat is what you are. It determines right. your, your overall makeup. The Lord, Shara The Bible said in verse 7 of Isaiah 62, Do not give him rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem the praise of the earth. I am using the verse in the context of the Philippines. Although it's talking about Jerusalem as the, the capital city of Israel. We don't stop praying. You do not give him rest. You do not give God rest until God is established and makes the Philippines the praise of the earth. Amen. Glory to God. Don't ever think that Philippines is not America.
God. You are Philippines. Your destiny is different from America. What is important is you go and walk and fulfill your destiny as a nation. You do not stop to intercede until Philippines becomes a praise to the earth. You know mothers and fathers in the room and even, even young people, you can make a difference. Instead of wasting your time doing something irrelevant, pray for the country. Yes. That righteousness will increase in the country. Amen. Governance of righteousness will be found in the public leaders in the lands. Pray for it. Minimize your time on Facebook. <laughs> Minimize your time on TV. Even mothers, when you wash those clothes, when you're doing laundry, you pray, Lord, send forth righteousness revival in my town as you wash your clothes. So if you're washing 30 pieces of clothes, can you imagine? You could have prayed for 30 pounds already. And then if you wash those clothes every week, you have prayed to 120 pounds all over again already. Sink like that. Think about the value of your time. Amen. When I walk, wake up in the morning, I pray. In the, in the United States, I do everything. We don't have help. When I wash the dishes, oh, I still pray. When I wash the dishes, I said, while I'm washing the dishes, this is the same time that I will praise the Lord. Who told you that we could not multitask? God has created us to become a multi-dimensional person. and I praise the Lord. After I, I'm done praising the Lord, I have to map the floor. This time, oh God, my worship is going with the floor mapping. <laughs> and I play some of the worship music and I worship with it. After I'm done with the floor mapping, this time I have to do laundry. So I put in the laundry, put some of them in the dryer. This time, this will be my intercession for this person that she will get healing for her cancer. So while I load up laundry, I said, God, Remember this person, Lord God. I intercede for her. I curse the roots of cancer in her body. By the time I finish my laundry, I also finish with my intercession with her. <laughs> this time I have to try to, to buy some grocery. The distance from my house to the grocery is 10 minutes. While I am driving, some of you make a, a quick request. Oh, I have an exam. I need to make good grades. Oh Lord, I pray that you lead now, Lord God, will excel in this exam. That she will remember what she has started in the last few days. That she will not fail this test. That in the result of the test, you will be honored in her life. You, she will, you will be glorified in her life. And God, I consider this as an answered prayer. I release the angels of God right now to assist her in her exam. That she will not be fearful. She will not be nervous. And Lord God, I declare victory and a high praise in Jesus' name. And then I'm back to the house. I'm putting in the, the, the grocery to the fridge and to the and you know to wherever I place them. And I told the Lord, I'm gonna rest this time. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I will really do my intense praying. I will do the prophet's praying. Amen. That's when the enemy really has to be scared. Because I'm going to start to pray and call forth your names. Shara Babayasika and the nations of the world. Yes. And I'm releasing the fire of God to every places in the world. And I have known here that we have weapons of war that the enemy could not stand. And I am going to use it until I would make a mess out of their lives. And until every captive is taken out of their captivity. Because the Lord said you can intercede to the point you are not giving God rest until righteousness is established. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I have a time when I step out of my car and as I drive, I have to get gas. 
to fuel up my car. I will make that as an opportunity to pray for every house in the area. So I will pray, Father God, if this family here is divorcing, I pray that you will fix their marriage. That you are going to restore love. That there will be communication. That the barriers of, 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 of disagreement and misunderstanding will collapse. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you are going to send them anointed men and women of God that can minister life and restoration to their marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, protect and preserve the children. I don't want the children to be confused. I do not know these people, but you know them. And Father God, I don't want the, the, the breakdown of the family to affect other people that is close to them, and that is within their sphere of relationship. Father, bring forth revival in this family. In Jesus' name. By the time I'm done with my guests, I am praying to at least three or four household in the area. None of my time is wasted. We're eating, we're talking to each other. I'm there but I'm not there because my mind is already praying. Sometimes you're talking to me and my answer is not right because my mind is praying. I'm physically with you but I'm not with you. My spirit is talking to God. So bear with me. If you ask me something, the answer is different. <laughs> you know what I'm talking, right? You know? Because my spirit is praying. It's better than some of you. I ask you a question, your answer is different. Not because you're praying, but because you have this action. Shut up, my God. You see, the Lord said in Isaiah 62, Isaiah 62, verse 1, I will not keep silent because of Zion, and I will not keep still because of Jerusalem, until her righteousness shines like a bright light, and her salvation like a flaming torch. Righteousness is an advertisement to the world. Do you know why so many people want to migrate to the United States? Because they are still a righteous country. Despite what's going on right now. And people are attracted to the righteousness in them. The laws are set. The laws are defined from A to Z. So even if you are a new immigrant entering into the country, if you know how to read, you will know the laws. It's all over the internet. You will know what to do. That's righteousness. I have mentioned it this morning that when the Constitution of the United States was drafted a long time ago, out of the 55 drafters of the Constitution, 52 were born again Christians. Out of the 55, over 80 the Constitution. 52 were born again Christians. Yes. Only three are not. And one of the 52 is a man named Webster who blessed the world with the Webster Dictionary. And the Constitution of the Philippines was copied to the Constitution of the United States. So our Constitution has a righteous root. Because we copied it from the United States. Thank God you didn't copy the constitution of a communist country. Thank God you didn't copy the constitution of China. Or in some other countries. Because their constitution was written by righteous people and Philippines copied it, we become a drinker of the righteousness. You owe United States an intercession. Without their constitution, we are clueless on how to draft ours. <laughs> Philippines will be healed from its situation if we know how to make use of our time to intercede for her. a time to pray for the Philippines. Shara Magayo Sika. The future of this country 
should not be in the hands of the wicked. The future of this country should be in the hands of the righteous. After this title, Makap Gal became president. Philippines was number two in the entire Asia. Then a wicked man named Marcos became president. By the time Marcos left office in 1986, Philippines was number two at the bottom. From number two when we entered into the office to number two in the bottom. That's what will happen if the wicked will govern the land. And Marcos has a demon. Marcos has this unusual skill of reading. Not your normal way of reading that you start from here, you read like this. Marcos is reading from backwards going up. Miriam Defensor Santiago was his ghost writer a long time ago. And it was Miriam.